I'm Professor Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today in our series of selective treatment programs using on-farm culture, we're going to be talking about uh, laboratory setup of the on-farm culture lab. One of the most important things if you're thinking about using an on-farm culturing program is to select the right workspace to set up your laboratory. Uh, it's very important that this workspace, first of all, is not a food preparation area for, uh, for employees because we're going to be growing microorganisms and for safety purposes we want to keep those functions separate from food preparation for the employees. We'd like to have a well-lit area so that we can uh, properly uh, read the plates and we want to make sure we have surfaces um, of the work area that are easily disinfected after we're done inoculating and reading the plates. Uh, the area that we're in here right now is a small work area um, that meets all of those criteria and in fact for this particular on-farm laboratory we've set up a small portable uh, plastic cabinet area that meets all of our requirements. It's easy to disinfect, it's got sufficient workspace, for our incubator, we've got a task light available, so if it's uh, not a bright day, we can turn on that light and uh, easily take a look at the colonies. And we've got an um, area uh, where we can store our supplies. There's really two really key pieces of equipment that, that you need to consider when you're doing an on-farm culturing program. One is simply having a clean refrigerator, again, that's not used for storage of of food that'll be used for human consumption. And we need to have a place within that refrigerator that's clean that we can store the on-farm culture media that we're using. So you'll see that these are sealed and uh, we've got a great place uh, where we can keep these when we're not using them. Really one of the most key pieces of equipment that you need to consider when you're starting an on-farm culturing program is to have an appropriate incubator. I highly recommend buying one of these small incubators, such as this mini incubator, um, rather than using something like an egg incubator, because uh, these incubators are only a couple hundred dollars, and they're uh, easy to clean, and they can be kept at the proper temperature. You'll see we have a thermometer here that allows us to make sure that we maintain that temperature, which should be approximately body temperature about 98.6 or about 37 to 38 degrees Celsius. Uh, within that incubator we need to have space not only for the, the, the media that we're using in our on-farm culture program but we like to have a small cup of water, this is just regular tap water, that we keep inside the incubator in order to maintain the appropriate humidity to allow us to effectively grow the bacteria. Another important consideration for an on-farm culture program is disposal of the waste such as the used swabs or the plates after we're done reading them. Uh, in many instances we can have a biohazard uh, disposal bag on the farm. You can see we've got our, here, ours here located right next to the incubator and uh, we can put our used supplies in that biohazard bag and then dispose of that according to the local regulations for your area. And it's very likely if you have questions about this, you could ask your local veterinarian for guidance on how to deal with this waste. We also have to consider uh, disposal of the used plates. Uh, in, again, local regulations will vary on that. In many areas, however, the simplest way to dispose of these plates is to flood each plate with bleach in order to kill the bacteria then seal that plate using tape and in some instances after that process those plates can be disposed in a normal fashion or in some instances they may need to go to a local waste incinerator. You can see that we really don't need a lot of supplies to do these on-farm culture programs and that's one reason that many farms have been able to adopt the use of these programs. But there are a few more things we need and with this setup we've got them all stored right here in an easy tray that allows us to be able to easily access the extra tools we need to set up the plates. A few of the things we need are gloves. Of course most farms have um, nitrile or latex gloves available and we need to make sure that the person doing the culturing, setting up those plates, actually wears the gloves and disposes of them after they're done. 
We also need to make sure that we've got the vials available and an um, indelible permanent marker to, to make the notations in the milking parlor of which cow, which quarter, and the severity score. And then after um, we have the milk sample and it comes to our on-farm laboratory, we typically will use a swab rather than a loop. And these swabs are used to actually inoculate the plates, which we'll be showing in a future video where we talk about actually using the medias. These swabs are used for one per milk sample and then they're disposed of and they contain approximately 0.1 ml, which is an important thing to think about when we move forward in a future series about how to read those plates. Those are really um, all of the supplies we need with the exception of, of disinfection. You can see we have a hand sanitizer here. We also often will have baby wipes, which we can use to, um, to clean off our workspace after we're done. But overall, you can see that uh, the supplies are relatively limited. Uh, and the key is that we have a nice, clean place to keep them so that they don't become contaminated with dust or other things that will make reading the plates much more difficult when we move on to that part of doing the on-farm culturing. In conclusion, you can see that the requirements for setting up an on-farm laboratory are relatively simple. We need a designated workspace that is a low traffic area that is not a food service or food preparation area. We need to make sure we have a refrigerator available for storing the culture media. That refrigerator ideally won't also include food that's used for human consumption. We need to have an incubator that can reach approximately body temperature. And we need to have a space that's well lit and uh, easy to clean and allows for storage of the supplies so that they don't become contaminated on the farm. Mm -hmm.